Today we're going to be going over how to use the lightning bolt icon to auto set your speeds and feeds and where the machining data libraries are located at and how they work in conjunction to one another. So for the agenda today we're going to explore using the lightning bolt for auto setting the speeds and feeds in uh, each operation. We're going to modify existing cutting conditions and add new cutting conditions. We're going to also explore how the machining data library uses the coefficients to drive speeds and feeds for tools that are not listed by size, shape, or tool material. So here's how the navigators are found. You'd go into the menu, drop down, tools, and then edit machining data library here. You can also get to that same function by going into the ribbon in the upper right hand corner, the tools category. If you go to the drop down, you'll see the edit machining data library is also in there. And then once you bring the, the machining data libraries up, you'll see that you have seven tabs at the top. You have machining data, cut method, tool material, part material, tool machining data, machines, and import. So the first tab, machining data, what this is is it's to select the different coefficients. So it gives you tool material, cut method, and part material. So once you select these, these are for setting if you don't have the attributes in the, the model file set correctly. So you should be importing your tool, your uh, part material. Uh, your tool material should be imported from the tool category from when you create tools. And then your cut method should be um, imported in from when you choose your cut method. So if you don't want to hard set all of your numbers, like for high speed steel, boring, and then carbon steel, for having all those preset, if you, if you want to have them all preset and have individual lines for them, then you'll be able to use the lightning bolt icon and it'll auto set from the different coefficients that are listed in each one of these tabs. And if you don't want to set them that way, you can set individual machining data by going in here and simply selecting the tool material, what method you're using to, for cutting, and what your part material is. Once you hit insert here, another dialog box comes up that says what type of cutting are you wanting to do? Turning boring, turning cutoff, face milling, all the different types of operations. And then it'll also give you a, a selection for a diameter of your tool, depth of cut, length of cut, surface footage, and feed rate per revolution. And then that's where it will drive, drive your RPM and your feed rate from. So let's go into NX, show you how this is done. So right now you see I have I don't have anything selected. I don't have any speeds and feeds selected in here at all. So when I go in to this operation, I'm going to go down to the speeds and feeds category. When I use this light lightning bolt set machining data auto set, it comes up and it says that no entry was found in the machining data library that matches the current part material, tool material, and cut method. So those are the three things that must be found for it to be able to use that. So I'm going to go ahead and hit zero here just to clear this out. Now what I'm want to show, wanting to show you is we go into menu, tools, scroll down to edit machining data library, then this dialog comes up. So we have our machining data, cut method, tool material, part material, tool machining data, machines, and import. So what you can do to start off with is you would want to create an Excel sheet that is formatted with these different columns with these names on there so that you can start developing your, your tool list, speeds and feeds, library, and then you can just import that in maybe once a week whenever you develop more speeds and feeds so that you're staying current. So that's what the import function. You can import it as a text file, you can import speeds and feeds as a uh, Excel file or you can import in a machining data file like a database file. So let's start off with the first tab machining data. So what you do at this tab is you develop speeds and feeds for a specific tool. So what we're going to do is we're going to say this particular tool is carbide coated indexable. We're going to be doing end milling type of cutting on this and our part material is standard carbon steel. So now when we hit insert, the input units should follow suit for what the tool is. So this happens to be millimeters. So once I hit insert, this next dialog comes up that says, okay, I'm giving it this library reference, which is just a reference number. It doesn't mean much of anything. It's in metric. 
Now our diameter, this tool happens to be a 16 millimeter. I'm going to tell it our length is 100 millimeter long. Our cut depth is 50 millimeter long. Our step over about 80% of the tool. It's 250 surface footage and a feed rate per tooth of about a tenth per millimeter per tooth. And we're going to have four flutes. You can also get into feed rate percentages for your engages, retracts, first cut, second. You have a lot of control on your feed rates. So once I hit OK to this, it gives me a listing here. So once I hit OK, it saves that to the library. Now when I go back to this operation, it says that our tool material is carbide coated, carbide coated, indexable. It also says that our type of cutting is going to be end milling right here. So it shows that attribute end milling. And then it says our part material we want to go in here menu tools part material tell it that we're using carbon steel so now we have all our attributes that are needed for it to go through and find that setting that listing and to auto set our speeds and feeds relative to that listing now the other way that we can do this is we go in here to our machine speeds and feeds our machining data libraries I'm gonna go ahead and remove this setting for end milling delete it now I'm just gonna go in here to tool machining data so I'm going to say insert now this is going to ask us to pick specific tools so I want to end uh, end mill indexable 16 millimeter now it's asking us specific attributes cut depth 50 step over by 80 percent 250 a tenth per revolution now this is being set to a 16 millimeter tool so now anytime that this tool is uh, picked up it's going to go off of the machining, our part material, part material is the carbon steel, then it's going to go off of tool material, which is carbide coated, then it's also going to go over cut method, which is end milling and now it's going to go and it's going to use the coefficients to develop that speed and feed for a 16 millimeter end mill so it says that we didn't have one of the settings set correctly so we need to make sure that we go in and have all of our settings set correctly so once you have your part material your tool material tool cut method and part material and tool material then it will auto set the speeds and feeds for you so and then once you have this set then you're going to want to save this out to your Excel sheet so that you can develop this tool sheet as you go that way it's, it's not something that you have to do all at once or you have to import and export all the time it's just so you can keep a running tally of, of all your tools and that way you can use this auto set function the me personally I, I don't use this auto set function because it's more and more common in today's day and age with our tooling that we're using high high speed end mills high speed uh, face mills and we're using tools that have very large axial depth of cut very sh uh, small uh, radial depth of cut or we're using a very small axial depth of cut, very wide radial depth of cut going very quickly. So I can't very well use coefficients that are plus or minus 5%. Plus or minus 5% on an 80 millimeter 
uh, Hitachi face mill that's only going 75,000 uh, depth of cut, 85% width of cut, going at 590 RPM, 3,000 millimeters a minute. You can't go any percentage extra on that tool. And the same with a very large axial depth of cut, very small radio depth of cut. Those tools are so precise when it comes to speeds and feeds that even a percentage or two will, will give you adverse effects and blow the tool up. So what I choose to do is I choose to use the template method. So I develop my operation, my speeds, feeds, my cut patterns, uh, everything that I like out of the operation. And then once I like this, I save this and I go object, template settings. The object can be used as a template. And then I also check creative parent group is checked or is created. That way, whenever I create a, I would name this operation, say, rough milling. Every time I would create a parent group called rough milling, it would bring in this tool and this cavity milling with all of those parameters set that way. I prefer to use the template method much more than using a running uh, tool data library. So back to our PowerPoint summary. We looked at how NX uses the coefficients to derive speeds and feeds for tools that are not listed by size, shape, or tool material. We added different cutting conditions, different tool materials, different part materials, and cutting strategies to manipulate the way that it was going to produce its speeds and feeds. And we also manipulated cutting conditions in the machining data library and in the tool data library. So we modified the different methods of manipulating those coefficients. So just wanted to make sure we touched base on the hands-on training that we offer at Ceratech. We offer many different levels of uh, training from fundamentals through the advanced users. We also offer engineering services that are addressed to your demand uh, for our advanced engineering capabilities. We have a, a wide variety of uh, engineering services that are available to, to our customers. Uh, thank you for attending. And here are some of our links to some of our different Ceratech uh, social medias.